Hi, my name is Darren, and I'm from Group 20, and our seventh topic is Smart Amary Sales Retail Store System. So what is Smart Amary Sales Store? It is a store that is fully operated by the Internet of Things devices. And Internet of Things device, Internet of Things is a collective network of connected devices and technology that facilitates communication between devices in the cloud. For example, is that the cameras are the camera that are installed in the store capture the view and then upload to the cloud and the owner can see from his devices. And moving on to the objective is that we're trying to solve the limited customer service which which unable to give satisfaction to the customer because there is no one around to help the customers. And the security issues is that thief may and vandalism may occur when no human supervision is present. And inventory control is that the system may have error in detecting the item which may cause overstocking or out of stock for the items. That's all for my part. Thank you. My name is Hoilun. So now I would like to present about the architecture diagrams of our proposed system. So first of all, our proposed system will use the Amazon's cloud service to build a smart solution to solve the problem statement. So first module, we using the Amazon's Cognito to build out the authentication module like sign in, sign out function. And also we also using the Lambda and DynamoDB to implement some basic function like press order and update the inventory and also retrieve the menu from the inventory table. Second module is when users call the post order function, the system will send a product detail and action command to the robot to tag the to pick up the product and press into the counter. So we will using the IoT call to implement this function. So for third module, we also using the Lambda to check the inventory. If the inventory is less than 10, the system will send an email to the managers using the Amazon SNS. And also we using the Amazon Less to provide a checkbox to provide customer service to the users. Users can query about the order process or send a review to the short owner. So last module is the S3 baggage will store the daily sales record and the managers can uh, tag the manifest the URL of the S3 baggage and press it into the quick size to view the daily record data visualization. So that's all for the proposed solution. Thank you. I am Liu Chang. I'm going to present about the comparison of the cloud computing services. Nowadays, the cloud computing has revolutioned the way of business operates. Okay, there are three re leading cloud providers, which is Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Service. Okay. For the compute services, uh, Azure is using virtual machine, GCP is using Google Compute Engine, AWS is using EC2. Uh, for the storage, Azure is using Azure Blob Storage, GCP is using Google Cloud Storage, Amazon is using Amazon S3. Uh, while network, all of them are using the virtual network. Okay, so Amazon have the most services provided, which is 200 plus, while Azure and GCP have only 100 plus and 60 plus, respectively. For the pricing, um, AWS will have the lowest pricing, which is 0 0.134 USD per hour. For the security, the, all of them have the similar security functions, but we will choose AWS because AWS has the extensive security tool set at compliance certification and experience in market. AWS has a large and mature ecosystem of partners, tools, and services, making it an attractive choice for most of the business, including our project. That's it. Oh my God, thank you. Good day. My name is Shri Vishal and I'll be explaining the future trend of the smart unmanned uh, retail store. So the first thing is that the concept is as revolutionary as it is. Meaning when the, the idea is that people will walk into a shop, um, take whatever they want, purchase it and walk away without having to interact with any employee. And this concept may seem absurd at first, and it is a concept that can be seen as challenging social norms, but it is a reality because of the existence of the cloud services and also the integration of IoT devices and the connectivity between these two uh, perspectives allows for this concept to exist. And 
The second thing is the usage of deep learning techniques. Now, in the near future, um, customers can expect uh, deep learning techniques to be used. And the context is that each customer is different. Each customer has their own sets of procedures. So with the usage of deep learning techniques, it allows for the retail store to provide a unique tailored experience for each individual customer. And this could be in terms of what are the type of products that each customer tends to purchase and what kind of time that each customer tends to come and what kind of experience you can provide for each of these customers based on their behavior, based on their purchasing behaviors and based on their body language even to be more complex. And these are things that can be achieved in the near future. Therefore, each customer that shops at the retail store will have an experience that is uniquely tailored for them and giving them not only a comfortable experience, but also a seamless um, shopping experience. And last but not least, it is the integration of multiple IoT devices. Now, a scenario of this would be in the integration of devices such as um, a weighing device on users' shopping cart to track orders, cameras on the aisles to observe items that users are taking via computer vision, and also tracking sensors to track the user's movement throughout the store. And all of this data can then be stored and used again by any deep learning techniques to provide a unique experience uh, to each user. And the implementations may seem complex, but with the existence of cloud computing and its services, essentially nothing is impossible. And we can all expect um, that these type of stores, these type of retail stores where, where no employees are in it, are going to be more and more famous. And in the near future, maybe from in 40 to 50 years, uh, this concept will no longer seem foreign and people can expect to walk into shops and leave with their items without having to interact with anyone. And that is all thanks to the existence of cloud services. That's all from me, thank you. Now I'm going to do a demonstration about the uh, Amazon S3, which is uh, storing the data. Okay. Uh, first, we want to create a S3 bucket. Okay. This will be the name of the bucket. Okay. And then here we choose the AWS region. Okay. After that, we just click on the create bucket, then it will be done. Okay. We have created a S3 bucket here, which is sales record and star. Okay, which re is record the sales record of each day. This is for 2023 April 14. This is for 2023 April 20. Okay, we click into it. Okay, we can see that uh, the records are in CSV file. Okay, next I'm going to talk about the quick site. Okay, quick site is a tool to visualize the data from S3 bucket. Okay, we can click the new analysis and then we click the new data set. We want to import the data from S3 and then we want to copy the manifest URL from the S3 bucket, which is this one. This one, we click the copy S3 URI and then we paste it here. Then we click connect, then the data set will, uh, will be connected and created. Okay, we have created a sales analysis data set here, which is this one. Okay, this is the uh, sales analysis data set uh, for uh, the according to the SID. Okay, this is uh, two SID 20 and 21, which uh, with the different color. Okay, we can see that for SID 20, the, to the total price is uh, 20. 23.6 and for the SIP 21 is 13.6 total price. Okay, so uh, that's it for the presentation for QuickSight. Hi, my name is Darren. And I'm responsible for the Amazon Cognitor and also the DynamoDB. So for the Cognitor, you can see here there's only one user here for now. So when I host the UI, I'll be here in this page. And I sign up. I'll put tester tool and tester tool and email. I'll put my email for now. It's my personal email and password. Okay, sign up. I'll save. 
for the verification code, I'll go to my the email that I type in. This is a verification code. Yeah, I'll place it here, confirm account. And it should be here. Yeah, there is two user now, tester tester two. This is the one that I just created. And moving on to the Dynamo DB. For the Dynamo DB, I'll be testing it with Postman. This here. But before that, I'll go into the explore items to see these are uh, items that I created. This item one and item two. The price is five and one point two, and the sales record. So I'll later create a sales SID of the sales ID of twenty five, which is here. So if I press this, which is SID twenty five, send or pause. It'll say order place order successfully placed. And if I return here and refresh this, it should have here 25. This is SID 25, which means this is working and that's all for my part. Thank you. My name is Hoi Lun. So now I would like to demo about the low stock alarm solution and also the customer service solution. So before we press the order let's check about the inventory so we can we can see that the, the quantity of the notebooks currently is 60 so in this case the customer will buy 51 notebook so when we press the order all right successfully so the inventory the quantity will become nine so because the system will check the inventory so if the quantity is less than the 10, the system will send an email to the manager. So now I will demo about the customer service since we're using the Amazon Lex to build a checkbox. So now let, let's test about the checkbox. All right, so first we ask about the order flow. All right, so the checkbox successfully tell us how to order the product. So second, we want to send the review to the shop owner. All right, so we need to add hi, Miss Adam in front of the message. Like this, your shop is very nice. So in this case, we actually the shop can set any keyword about the trigger function. All right, so we successfully send the review to the shop owner. So now let's check about the email. Good day. My name is Shri Vishal and I'll be explaining the connection between the IIT device to the AWS IIT console. So for here, I've already created a thing known as the transport robot. So within the AWS IoT console, they give us a step-by-step -step approach as to how to connect the console to the AWS IoT device itself. So it's to prepare your device and then you uh, register your device. Then you can choose a platform and an SDK. So the SDK file chosen will then depend um, uh, on how you connect your IoT device to the IoT console. So for this example, I've chosen the Python SDK file. And once you've chosen that, uh, it, the IoT console will ask you to download a connection kit, and then it will give you uh, two steps to run the connection kit. So I already have the connection kit installed here. So we can try to connect this um, connection kit to the AWS IoT console. So we can go to our MQTT uh, test client here. So here we can either subscribe to a topic or publish to a topic. So within the connection uh, kit package that the AWS IoT console will ask you to install for the Python SDK, we have the private and public key, and then we also have a PowerShell script uh, to initiate the connectivity between the IoT device and the IoT console. So from here in the start script, we can see um, that the topic that this particular uh, script is being subscribed to is the SDK test Python. So what, what we can do is we can go ahead and copy this topic. We can go back to our AWS IoT console and we can subscribe to a topic. So we can call the SDK test Python. 
So once this topic has been created, uh, basically whatever messages sent from the script file, also known as the IoT device, will be received by the AWS IoT console. So we can observe this by running the script file first. So we need to set the execution policy, which is explained uh, in the step-by-step -step approach by AWS IoT console. And then we can start the PowerShell script file. So as you can see, it is saying hello world. So once we've subscribed to the topic, um, we can see that the IoT, con the IoT device is now connected to the IoT console. And we can also pause, meaning the IoT console will no longer receive messages from the IoT device. And we can also publish to the topic, so meaning this is uh, sending messages from the IoT console to the IoT device. So maybe I can say, uh, A, this is a message from the AWS IoT console. So whenever I click on publish here, there's a message saying, hey, this is a message from the AWS IoT console, basically meaning that the AWS IoT console now can speak to the AWS IoT device. And with that being said, that is all from me. Thank you.